the Broncos in a horrible situation as a four on uh, five on four. Pargo took advantage of it by getting the offensive rebound. Normally, Perry Petty would have been blocking Pargo out. You know, I'm sure every coach and player on the West Coast Conference keeps a close eye on Gonzaga scores. You know, coming in when, you, when Gonzaga loses three, it's three straight, four or five. They fall from number four in the country all the way out of the rankings. There's probably a lot of people around the WCC thinking that maybe Gonzaga's vulnerable this year. Maybe we can get them in 08 09. And then they start posting a score like this, and I just wonder what that does to the, the psyche of the rest of the league. It's got to be devastating and to see the pressure like you're seeing right now the double team You know they say a tough player is able to split the double team But look how well the Zags play in that position do not overcommit themselves and get a jump ball Possession goes to the Broncos, but a great double team by Bolden and Day Betty drives and then gives Foster that shots off quick trigger though Crossolini lost the handle after a great rebound got it back no whistle. Bryant with a personal foul, the putt back, and a chance for three. Well, A for effort for the Broncos on that possession. Trossolini had a, what, two looks at it, got one block, went after a loose ball, and it winds up in John Bryant's hand. And then the big fella goes to work using the backboard. You young people watch that. He could have gotten fancy and slammed it right. Maybe. I, <laughs> they call him the Kleenex dunker, right? You can slip a Kleenex under his shoes. Right. Yep. Bryant now 10 points, 9 rebounds. Another rebound. And uh, he'll have his 36th career double-double at Santa Clara. Bolden off the miss. And Matt Bolden now tied with Austin Day with 16 points. I tell you, uh, the last couple of wins by the Zags have been impressive on the offensive end where they've had complete balanced scoring. And again tonight, balanced scoring. 16 by Day, 16 by Bowden, 13 by Gray, which, by the way, is his fourth consecutive game in double figures. And Bryant working on Foster. Foster with a great defensive play there. Cargo behind the back and now with numbers to Gray. And the jam! Stephen Gray with two hands. And Jeremy Pargo may be back, ladies and gentlemen. That was Pargo at his best right there. No question about it. And now Petty out of control, the turnover. And I'm surprised Keating is not upset with Perry Petty because he runs right by him and he says, call time out, let's get something set up. Petty takes it right to the hole and turns it over. So it's got to be a frustrating night for Terry Keating. I was not expecting Stephen Gray to try to put this down. I envisioned a layup here, and he shocked me. Stephen Gray with the hops, 70 to 36. It's game to get your blood pumping. Group Health Cooperative reminds fans that exercise, like cheering for the Zags, is the key to healthier living. Group Health, proud sponsors of the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Well, the students are back, and they've certainly been treated to one whale of an effort by their Gonzaga Bulldogs, leading Santa Clara 70 to 36. And the Broncos coming back out onto the floor now. And Craig, if you're, if you're Santa Clara, what are you trying to accomplish right now? But first, we'll talk about the assist leaders. There's Pargo at the top, and really, it's you know Pargo is the reigning West Coast Conference Player of the Year, and it's those type numbers that won him that award last year. You know, I, I believe he averaged about 12 points a game, but it was his ability to run the team as a solid point guard that won him that award. Yeah, being a field general out there, right. commanding his troops, telling them where to go. And here's another perfect example. Look at that left hand shuttle pass, just like a quarterback would do. Drew the defender in. Yep, and went then. as far as he could. And, you know, you talked to him after the Portland game where he had zero assists. And at that time, he was eighth in the nation at 6.8. I mean, he dropped all the way down to 18th in the nation now at 6.1. But what does he have tonight? Seven assists. You know what's even better, though? His assist to turnover ratio. Yeah, that's where this kid is really good. Really good. He's only 80th in the country, but it's at 1.98. So that means he handles the ball quite a bit. Don't, he's, he's, the ball's in his possession quite a bit. 
So he's going to be uh, prone to more turnovers because it's in his hands so much. But if you can have a two to one ratio, well, that is fantastic. But Craig, in, in honesty, now it was over three as Petty misses badly. Oh, yeah. three point shot. It was over three. It was one of the best numbers in the nation. And then Pargo kind of slumped when the team slumped. Yeah. And I think that number is only going to rise from here on out because uh, Jeremy seems to be playing a lot more loose tonight and he seems to be enjoying himself again. Here's Gray. He really got down on himself there for a few games. Yeah. Well, like I said, there's a great hustle by both guys. Dowdell and Foster. Hey, Dowdell is what? He's like 6'6, six, six, right? 6'7. Six, 6'8, Will Foster, 6 or 7, 5, going to the floor after the basketball. Yeah, think how difficult that must be just to get to the floor when you're 7 5. That's I mean, a long that, That's way. a long ways down there. Look at Will. Yeah. Well, actually, Dell had the ball. Will took him down. But uh, that's the kind of effort you want to see. If you get efforts like that from your 7 foot 5 guys, Imagine what that does to Stephen Gray, and, and especially the way the Zags and Dr. Kraus put so much emphasis on deflections and loose balls and recoveries. Watch the rotation on this free throw, Craig. By Dowdell. Well, he's from Australia, just like it's the toilets go the opposite way, right? Yeah, the, but it's not. <laughs> it's going la laterally. La <laughs> well, it's uh, opposite. He's used to the southern hemisphere, and we're how in the do northern you even, hemisphere. How do you get the ball to do that? I, it's, watch his release. It's going to have to be by the thumb. Watch the thumb. Now the thumb went inside out. He just maybe he keeps his guide hand on it too long. Turnover. We'll have the Zags foul him again so we can... Analyze Get another that look shot at it. Yeah, a little bit more. The second one looked a little bit better than the first one I saw. It did. Will Foster out of the game and gets a well deserved hand. I guess now if you're Santa Clara, with 12 minutes to play, Craig, you're just trying to work on things. Well, we get out of here with something positive to work on, and Kevin Foster buries the three. Well, the old game that we used to play is, and I think I've said this many times, is that you just take the points off the board. You don't play the scoreboard. You right. put 0-0 zero, zero in there, and you say, okay, the next five minutes, let's see how well we do against the Zags. And I think sometimes you can come out with some positives that way. Car going to the corner. Now Day with it. Spins, hangs off the glass, and hits. He covered a lot of ground with what three dribbles and a step through. <laughs> he went from the he really beyond did. the arc to the paint to right on the block. Turner off the front of the rim. Day with the rebound. Right, Turner, I keep calling him Turner. Foster and the turnover. Here's Dowdell with it, spinning, lost it, picked up by Foster. Rayhan into the corner to Petty drives. Ball loose, picked up by Ira Brown. Cargo may have gotten away with a personal foul there as he knocked Petty to the ground. And it's Santa Clara basketball. Boy, I tell you what, that those are a couple of possessions were a mess. 